Hello, I'm Terry Kolath. I'm here today with Nir Cabaretti, and he is conductor of the Southwest Florida Symphony, which is why we have the opportunity to have a class in the Academy of Lifelong Learning prior to our next symphony concert in the Fine and Performing Arts series. Thank you for joining me, Nir. Thank you for having me, Terry. Well, we have enjoyed watching you conduct the symphony. We've enjoyed some of the educational presentations you've given us. And this time we're going to have the opportunity to hear from you about the art of the conductor. Right. I thought it's uh, something I would like to share with our friends in Shell Point. A lot of time, you know, when I tell people, ask me, what do you do, etc., and I, when you come to say that I'm conducting an orchestra, a lot of people say, so what does it mean? What do you do, actually? Why they need a conductor? All these kind of questions which are legitimate because, you know, <laughs> one would say, well, the music is written, composer gave clear indications, or pretty clear. Why do they need somebody from outside to tell them what to do? So we will discuss that. We'll kind of the language, the vocabulary. You know, like every language, we have a vocabulary. It's, it's basically a hand movements that we use. And if a musician's in Japan or a musician in Argentina or in any other place in the world where we cannot maybe communicate on a language, we can communicate through music. I don't need to tell them anything. Just follow my hands and it will sound. And everybody learns everybody that Everybody learns that. So a musician is trained to work with a conductor. They know what a conductor does. Conductors, of course, develop this vocabulary to be their own body language. And we will discuss that. We will discuss also the role of a conductor in the organization. Like, um, you know, you deal with fabulous musicians who master their instrument for 20 years before they join a symphony. How could you tell them what to do when they are so good in their instrument? So what is the kind of interaction? What is the dynamic between a conductor suggesting something or a musician suggests something and the conductor takes? Wow, that's a great idea. I would follow that. So it sounds that you actually are an instrument in yourself. Pretty much. My instrument is the orchestra, though. I, I sort of operate a big, a large instrument, and it's, it's kind of complicated. And of course, there are a lot of uh, logistics that, and, and traffic issues, like to start together, to end together, to accelerate, to slow down, etc. But what the conductor's more important role, I would think, is really to give a meaning to a piece that it was written 200 years ago, and if you just play it dry as the notes, it will stay dry. We want to make the music sound as if it was written today. So if I take a um, symphony by Beethoven, by Mozart, by Brahms, whatever, I try to present it as if it was now written for this event with the energy and the excitement that is important for now. And of course, talking about interpretations. So a composer would say, I want this piece to be fast. What does it mean fast? If you drive 50 miles in the campus here in Chilpo, that's quite fast. If you f drive 50 miles in on the highway, it's slow. So this is always a relationship to something. And we will discuss that. And like, how does it feel? When does it feel too fast? When is it too slow, etc.? And there are, of course, some, um, I would say, technical issues. If I do something that is too fast, the musician probably won't be able to play. If I do it too slow, they also might not be able. They both, for example, need to jump in a certain speed. So there is a little bit of limitation to what a conductor can do. And of course, we want to stay loyal to the music. We still have a little bit room of liberty, and we will discuss that. How long have you been conducting? Uh, you know, we start very early, so by the time I was 18, I was already conducting, and um, as I said, I was trained as a musician, as a, as a pianist, and then I started other, to study other instruments, mm -hmm. and I conducted my friends, and this kind of thing, I want, you know, the military band that I had to do. And so it, it's really a long path, but after studying it, uh, I would say that I'm now probably 25 years of experience in this field. So, Do you remember why you wanted to conduct? No, I have no idea. I still don't know mm -hmm. why I want to conduct, and I never look at it as a job or a career or a way to make money, a way mm -hmm. to make a living. I followed the passion that I had as a child, and that was to play music and to play with other people. Mm -hmm. And then it sort of evolved itself to lead the orchestra. But, you know, 
this is theoretically it's part of my work, but I never see that as a way. I come and you know, I wake up in the morning and say, I have to do this, and I, I'm just happy to do that. It's as, as a passion. And it's also something should be said, if you don't feel 100% called to do that, forget it. It's a very difficult path. Because there's, it's also complicated to work with different ensemble and traveling and, and rap, you know, you're covering 400 years of music history from all kind of English, French, Russian, up to contemporary pops, <laughs> uh, ballet, opera, vocal, whatever. It's really a commitment. Mm -hmm. And if you're not 100% sure that that's what you want to do, then it's probably better to stay away. <laughs> so well, we're glad you didn't stay away. I'm, 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 I feel very fortunate to do that. Well, please take every opportunity to join us for the class on the art of conducting. And then won't we all be watching extra carefully when we see this conductor at work at the concert on March 8th in the auditorium at Shell Point from Copeland to the classics.